Today I'll show you how you can animate any still photo in Photoshop. Hey there everybody, this is Indra and if you're new to my channel, we do all kind of Photoshop stuffs like tips, tricks and photo manipulations. And today I'll show you a neat trick to animate any still image in Photoshop. So we're in Photoshop and we'll be starting with this image and we'll be animating the sky and the water. And if you want to learn more in depth about animating in Photoshop, do check out my in-depth video tutorial about animating in Photoshop that should be popping right now in the top right corner in the info card. Okay, so since we're animating, we definitely need our timeline. Let's bring up our timeline by going to window and timeline. Once your timeline panel pops up, click create a video timeline and you will move on to the timeline edit view. So what we'll be doing here is we'll be trying to separate out our subject and create a seamless sky and a seamless ocean at the very first. So let's duplicate our background layer. Let's right click on it and select duplicate layer. Let's rename it as without subject. I'll quickly remove our subject by selecting with the lasso tool and going to edit fill and content ever fill and click ok so photoshop did do a good work over here filling out my subject but here we can see a little bit of distortion around this region of the ocean so i'll try to quickly fix it i'll again select with the lasso tool around the area that i feel is not correct i'll go to edit fill and content ever and let's see what photoshop does this time yeah, it looks fine, but it's not perfect. So let's try to patch things up by the clone stamp tool. So we do not need to be perfect over here because our subject will be standing here at the final composition. So this blemishes and spots won't be visible that much. Great. Now let's separate our sky that we'll be animating. I'll just create a new layer and take a soft round brush. The hardness can be zero because I want softer edges and I'll just take any color and I'll try to mark out the clouds that I want to animate. I'm controlling the size of the brush with the square brackets and I'll be just painting roughly. We won't be wanting any hard edge because that will be visible when we'll be animating. So that should be fine. That should cover all the clouds area. Now what I'll do is I'll right click on the thumbnail of the layer and select select pixels. So this will select all the area that I have painted right now. And I'll hide this layer for now and I'll select my without subject layer and hit Ctrl J or Command J on the keyboard to duplicate the selected pixels onto a new layer. So I have my skies separated out onto a new layer. Let's rename it as sky. Let's bring up our main without subject layer again and I'll just create another new layer and with the same soft round brush I'll try to mark the area of the ocean that I'm trying to animate. Again we won't be wanting any hard edge over here because that will be visible in our animation. And we won't be also going over the margin because that will again create a hard edge that will be visible in our animation. Great. And just like before, I'll right click on the thumbnail and select select pixels. It will select the pixels in the layer and not the transparent area. I'll just hide it. I'll select my without subject layer and hit Ctrl J or Command J on the keyboard to duplicate the ocean onto a new layer. I'll rename it as C. Now we have our two layers that we will be animating, but we definitely want to select our subject and put them on top of these layers. So let's hide all these layers and make our background image visible. And let's try to select our subject in our composition. You can try any method that you want, like quick selection tool, pen tool, anything. But I'll show you quickly. I'll do it with object selection tool. This is available in newer versions of Photoshop. If you're using an older version, this might not be present. Let's select our background layer and mark around our subject. So it did a decent job of selecting our subject, but here are some errors. Let's quickly fix them with the quick selection tool. So that's roughly okay. You can spend as much time as you want to perfect the edges. I will be stopping right here. 
So again with my background layer selected, I'll hit Ctrl J or Command J to duplicate my selection onto a new layer. So here is my subject and let's rename this layer as subject. Let's take this layer to the very top. Let's enable our sky, sea and our without subject layer and we'll delete these two layers. Great, let's zoom out a bit and let's start with the animation. By default, Photoshop creates a 5 second timeline of the animation. You can increase or decrease this, but I'll keep it just like that for the sake of simplicity of this tutorial. If you want to learn in details, you can always go to my in-depth Photoshop animation tutorial that should be there inside the info card in the top right corner. Let's zoom in our timeline a bit so that we can have a better look. And we'll transform our layers to smart object so that we can have the transform keyframes and transform operations when we'll be animating them. If you do not change them to smart objects, you won't be getting this transform keyframe over here, rather you will be having this position. And we do not want position, we'll be needing transform, so we'll be changing them to smart objects. So you can see we have transform now instead of position. With that done, let's select our sky layer and click this stopwatch to place a keyframe onto this transform timeline. Now select your move tool from here or press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and you can move the sky a bit and we can leave it right there to mark our starting point of the animation. Now drag your timeline marker to all the way to the very end and then again grab your move tool and try to move your sky and let's keep it over here. Just as we lift our move tool you can see Photoshop has placed a timeline keyframe over here and it means that it has recorded the movement that we have done right now. So if we move our timeline marker right now you can see that the sky is animating. So this is our starting point that we have denoted by moving the sky and this is our ending point. We can also move the sky a bit to the right that should be fine. So the sky will move from left to right just like this. Now you can click this play button to see the animation. It looks fine but it's definitely chopping off at the very end. So we need to fix that right now. And by the way, if your animation is not looping, you can simply select this settings icon and select loop playback checkbox. Okay, so let's make our transition smooth. To do that, we need to duplicate this sky layer with the timeline markers two more times. To do that, right click on the sky layer and select duplicate layer. Let's keep it as sky copy and make sure your timeline markers are also copied just like this. If your duplicated layer does not have these markers, then this will not work. Great, now let's make another duplicate of this layer. Let's right click and select duplicate layer. So we have now three copies of our sky layer. Let's group them together so that we can manage the layers properly. With my second copy of the sky layer selected, I'll hold shift on the keyboard and select my first sky layer so that all of them gets highlighted. And I'll press Ctrl G or Command G on the keyboard to group them into a single group. Let's rename this as sky group. Now what you need to do is you need to find out the middle point of your timeline. So since we have a 5 second timeline and our timeline has 30 frames in 1 second that you can see from here it's showing 30 fps or you can click this flyout menu and select set timeline frame rate and you can see that the frame rate is 30 fps that means in 1 second we have 30 frames. So the middle of a 5 second timeline will be 2.5 or we cannot have decimals in frames. So 2.5 here will mean 2 seconds and 15 frames because 1 second has 30 frames. So half of 1 second is 15. So let me zoom in this timeline marker so that you can see it clearly. 
So you can see as we zoom in, it's showing the gradations properly. And here is 15F. That means it's the 15 frame marker. And this is just in between two second and three second markers. So this is the middle point. So here also you can see it's two seconds and 15 frames. This is where our marker is right now. So this is the middle point. Now what you need to do is you need to select the top copy of our three sky layers and drag this layer so that the starting point of this layer matches with the timeline marker which is at 2 seconds and 15 frames right we just drag the top layer to the very right so that its starting point aligns with our timeline marker now we need to do something similar for the layer which is at the very bottom but in a reverse fashion we need to drag it to the left so that its end aligns with the timeline marker you got it right we just drag the top layer to the very right so that its starting point aligns with the timeline marker which is standing here at the center point of our timeline and we drag the layer which is at the very below of our three copies we dragged it to the left so that its end aligns with the timeline marker so if your timeline was six seconds definitely this marker will be at three seconds and just like that it should be at the middle of your timeline now here you need to correct one thing just as we dragged our top sky layer to the right you can see that the work area also expanded we need to fix that you can simply drag this handle and set the work area again back to five seconds if you do not do this you will see this area of the animation will not play out properly so now let's play our animation and see what we have got Well, we are not quite yet there, right? Yes, we just need one more step over here and that is we need to fade out the starting and the finishing of these sky layers. We can do it by two ways. One is by adding opacity markers and that is simply starting with opacity zero and bringing up the opacity 200 when we are something around here for this layer but we can do it in a very simple way by adding transitions and that is here is our transitions menu and just as you click it will have different transition options you simply need to select fade and you can drag it and drop it here just like that so you can see you have your fade transition applied to this sky layer so we'll do the same for the other layers so this layer does not have its ending within our work area it is outside the work area so we do not need to add any fade to the end of this layer but we need to do it for our middle layer because it has both the end and the starting visible in our work area similarly the same goes for the very bottom layer and over here only the ending region is within the work area so we'll just drop the fade transition to that part now we'll increase the fade a bit, select this transition, just click on this sloping icon that you can see and right click and for my 5 second animation I found 1.5 second to work best. So let's quickly change them to 1.5 and now let's play the animation. Well, that looks good, right? Let me squeeze these panels a bit so that you can get a proper look at the animation. Great, now let's animate our C. And by doing that, we can again go over the steps that we have done right now. Let's stop our animation. Let's collapse our group. Let's collapse this group in the timeline menu also. And let's repeat the same steps for our C layer. Let's drag the timeline marker to the very starting point of our animation. And we'll click this transform stopwatch to place a marker in our transform timeline. Now we can move this, but I will not move this. And I'll show you that you can add any transform operations over here. I'll simply press Ctrl T or Command T on the keyboard to bring up my free transform tool. And in this animation technique, you can apply any transform that you want, like scaling, rotate, skew, perspective, distort, warp, anything. So what I'll do over here is I'll just squeeze it a bit and move it a bit to the left because I want the ocean to flow from this point 
towards this bottom right corner. So I have marked my starting point. Let's comment the changes. Let's take our timeline marker to the very end at the five second point. And again, bring up the free transform tool by pressing Ctrl T or Command T on the keyboard. Let's expand it. Just like that. And let's move it a bit towards the right. Maybe we can expand it a bit more like this. Let's commit our changes. And just like before, we need to make two more duplicates. Let's do that by right clicking and selecting duplicate layer. Let's do that again, right click and select duplicate layer. And make sure you're having those timeline markers getting copied to your duplicates as well. With that done, let's again bring our timeline marker to the very middle, which is two seconds and 15 frames for my five second animation. Let's repeat the steps. Let's select our top layer of the three copies and we'll move it to the right so that its starting point aligns with the middle point of our timeline. Let's now select the very bottom layer and let's move it to the left so that its ending point aligns with the middle point of the timeline. Now with that done, we'll be adding the fade transitions. Let's select the transition menu and select fade and let's drag them. We'll drag the transition to the starting point for the top layer because the ending region for this layer is outside our work area. Let's add the fade to both the end and the start of our middle layer because it's visible within the work area and apply the transition to the ending region of our very bottom layer because the starting area is again outside the work area. Now let's squeeze our timeline a bit and let's play the animation to see what we have got right now. It may take some time for the animation to render depending on your system hardware. You can simply reduce the image size at the very starting so that it becomes a bit faster. So here is our animation. A still image transformed magically into an animated image. Now let's stop the animation and definitely you can do more tweaks to correct things up like this shadow is now coming from the left. We can make some modifications on top of it. Like let's group all these three layers. I'm holding shift to highlight all the three layers and pressing Ctrl G or Command G to group them together. Let's rename the group as C group. And you can also add a layer mask to it and take a soft round brush and color black. And you can paint on the layer mask to hide parts of this C animation so that we can show the shadow from the original image. And we can also reduce the opacity and hide this shadow that is going outside this region. Now let's play the animation and see. I think it should look a bit better. So here we are. I would not like to end here but do a minor tweak with the C because I think it would look a bit better with the water waves and ripples mixing with one another and that is let me stop the animation and expand the group and that is let's increase the fade duration a bit. Let's change it to maybe 2.5. Let's do the same for all of these fade transitions. I feel this will turn the ripples more chaotic and let them mix with one another. We do not want this in the sky because we want the clouds to softly flow so we kept it at 1.5 but let's keep it at 2.5 and see how it behaves. If your animation is taking long or it's lagging, I would highly recommend that you reduce your image size from here. Go to image image size. This is a pretty large image as you can see. You can take it down to maybe 800 pixels. It will be a lot faster for you. Okay, so I think it looks a lot better, right? So this is one of the many ways by which you can animate a still photo and create an extraordinary animating photo out of it. I would really love to see what you create with these techniques. Do post your final animations in Instagram and tag me with Let's End Create. I'll be totally excited to see what you can do with this technique. 
I hope you liked today's video and if this helped you in any way, please subscribe to support my channel. I will see you in the next one and till then, enjoy creating.